Uh, Anne is uh, right here in Marin County in California. Kat Toops is out in the East Bay, and, and Dr. Deborah Gordon is uh, up in uh, in Oregon, up in Ashland, uh, and three fantastic physicians. So I'm really honored to have done this trial. And we're now actually just starting a second trial at six sites. So I'm very excited to work with, with uh, Dr. Hathaway again, Dr. Toops. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Gordon has retired. So we uh, unfortunately couldn't, uh, couldn't have her be involved. I wish we could have. Uh, but we now fortunately have Dr. Craig Tanio from Hollywood, Florida, Dr. David Hasse from Nashville, uh, Dr. Nate Bergman uh, from Cleveland, uh, and and uh, and Dr. Christine Burke, who is uh, from Sacramento. Uh, so this is going to be a fantastic trial. But I want to show you about the first trial, and this was a proof of concept trial. Just had 25 people to show can we actually make people better. And so this is the first trial in, in which instead of predetermining a treatment, the contributors were identified and then targeted. And you can see this trial on clinicaltrials.gov. It's registered at clinicaltrials.gov. And as you know, with all these previous trials, what happens? People end up when well, they say ahead of time, okay, we're going to treat people with this, whatever it is, without knowing ahead of time what's causing the problem. So we actually looked at what are the things that are actually causing the problem for each person and then address those. So we got, because this was a protocol, multiple pieces to it, it got denied by the Institutional Review Boards in 2011, got denied again in 2018. We finally got approved in 2019. We completed this in 2020, actually it was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. So it's freely available online. You can look at all the data. You can look at everything freely available online in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And actually that part came out in 2022, back in uh, August of last year. So as I said, small proof of concept trial, we took people who had MOCA scores of 19 and above. So what this meant was they either had mild cognitive impairment or they had early dementia. These weren't end stage dementia. So we're, when we're interested separately in that because there's more you have to do, but these were people who were in that third and early fourth stages. We treated them for nine months, and then we compared that to historical outcomes because there's a tremendous amount that's been known about what these people actually, the, the curve that they're actually on. As I mentioned earlier, you lose on average about three and a half points per year. So we sought to look at the root cause contributors. So we looked at pathogens. We looked at toxins. We looked at their genetics. We looked at their nutrients, their trophic hormones, their, their trophic factors and hormones, their immune responses, et cetera. So the goals for this, number one, we want to improve their energetics. Again, because that's the critical denominator here. We want to get these people into mild ketosis. If you're measuring by blood, one to four millimolar beta hydroxybutyrate. If you're measuring by uh, breathalyzer, for example, the Biosense breathalyzer would be one of them. You want to get above seven, preferably even above 10 uh, on what they call ACEs. Now you're measuring acetone instead of, but um, blood, probably a little more uh, on a moment by moment basis accurate, but they, they, either one can be excellent for telling you that you are getting successfully into ketosis. And then cerebral blood flow, we want to improve that. We want to improve the oxygenation, the mitochondrial function. And then we want to make sure that you are metabolically uh, adapted, so that you're, you're metabolically flexible. You can literally go back and forth between burning ketones and burning glucose in your brain. Insulin sensitivity, we want your HOMA IR to be 1.0 or lower. We wanna make sure you have enough trophic support. We wanna make sure that you resolve inflammation and prevent further inflammation. And of course, the most important thing, remove the source. Um, are, do you have inflammation because you have leaky gut? Um, do you have some mast cell activation? That's a common association. Um, Virtually everyone who is having cognitive decline does have activation of their microglia. So we want to bring that back down. So things like resolvins, very, very helpful to bring that down and then determining what's causing it. And then treating the pathogens and optimizing the microbiomes, not only the gut microbiome, but also the oral microbiome. If, you, if you've got uh, high amounts, for example, of P. gingivalis or T. denticola or P. intermedia, uh, or uh, F nucleatum, any of these things are associated with periodontitis and they can migrate not only for associations 
with cardiovascular disease, even have associations with cancer, but they actually can migrate into your brain. And what does your brain do when it responds? It makes amyloid to cover these things and sequester them for the rest of the brain. So again, what we call Alzheimer's disease is really a response to these various insults. Then we want to detoxify from organics, inorganics, biotoxins. If you're exposed to mercury, we want to make sure that you can detoxify there. And then interestingly, people do the best with some mild stimulation, whether they use light stimulation and some people use V-light or neuronics and there are other things to do. There's of course transcranial magnetic stimulation. There's something called MERT, uh, which is another form of magnetic uh, stimulation. And of course, brain training is another good one. All of these things can be helpful once you've done the right things to support the brain. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, you, when you get this cognitive decline, you typically have a mismatch between your innate system and your adaptive system. We want to bring the innate down. We want to allow the adaptive system to clear out the problem, whatever they happen to be. And then ultimately, after we do these other things, we want to bring down your amyloid. And you can do that with things like curcumin actually binds amyloid quite tightly and helps to reduce the amyloid. Now, these anti-amyloid drugs are being used in these high doses, which is unfortunate. What we'd like to do ultimately is do all the other things right first, and then use small doses of these things to slowly remove the amyloid from your brain. As it is currently, you go in there as a monotherapy in these drug trials, you grab the amyloid and you rip it away, you're doing it with antibodies, so you're creating some degree of inflammation. You're also taking amyloid, which actually helps to patch blood vessels, and you're literally ripping, it's like, it's like ripping a patch off a tire. And so no surprise, you get these micro hemorrhages very commonly in the trials. And then finally, we want to regenerate what's been lost. These people have lost synapses. So we want to support that. And that can be stem cells. It can be intranasal trophic factors. It can be optimizing BHRT. All of these things can be used and are helpful to regenerate these lost synapses. And again, you don't want to wait until the neuron itself has died. You want to get in early. So in this trial, we included MOCA scores. We included CNS vital signs. And, and again, MOCA scores, here, let's go back to here. MOCA scores are zero to 30. What's good about the Montreal Cognitive Assessment or MOCA is that it is something that tests multiple parts of the brain. So it's looking at executive function. It's looking at verbal memory. Um, it's looking at um, things like, uh, like switching uh, and looking at calculation. So multiple areas of the brain in a very simple test that just takes about 12 to 15 minutes to administer. Now, CNS Vital Signs is an online approach. It's much more sensitive to the MOCA. So the MOCA, very good for people who are relatively affected. CNS Vital Signs, very good for people who are minimally affected. So putting the two together, we could really get a good dynamic range to see where people stand. And let's see how we're doing on, okay, we're doing great on time. Okay, so the MRI. Uh, we want to know what does your brain look like? And most important, we want to know what are the volumetrics? We want to know, has your hippocampal volume gone down? And interestingly, we see it improve with people when you do the right things. So if you look at the neurocognitive index, these people improved over time. And again, this is very different. If you look at a drug trial, what you're going to see is going from here, down, 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 but a little, hopefully slightly more slowly. In this case, we actually see people go up. So they improve their CNS vital signs data. They improve their MOCA scores. And you can see here, the pandemic started right here. So you could see actually a few people did drop off. The good news, we still had many people who did extremely well. So there was a statistically significant difference with an improvement in these people over the nine months that they did this. If you look at their metabolic status, goes hand in hand. They improved their met metabolic status. They improved their CRPs. They improved their hemoglobin A1Cs. And these were, these were statistically significant. Now their HOMA IRs improved, but they, they didn't reach statistical significance. We didn't have follow-up HOMA IRs on enough of these people, unfortunately. But it was clearly improving in the ones that had it. Their triglyceride to HDL ratios improved. So their lipid status improved. Their homocysteines improved. 
their vitamin Ds improved. And these were all statistically significant in their improvement. So if we looked at MOCA scores, as I mentioned, 76% of them improved. The neurocognitive index from the CNS vital signs, 84% of them improved. The subtests, there were improvements in verbal memory, executive function, psychomotor speed, and on and on. Their AQ20, this is interesting. So the AQ20 is something that the, the partner uses to say, is this person better in this area or that area? And they have a scale from much worse, a little worse, no change, a little better, much better, so-called Likert scale. Uh, and so we had the partners gauge, did they actually see improvements of these people? And they did see a statistically significant improvement. Then we also looked at their brain training. All of them improved on their brain training scores. Then we also looked at their MRIs and their gray matter volume, which was very interesting because that actually got bigger. People who've already been diagnosed with MCI or dementia, clearly decrease their gray matter volumes between two and 4% per year. These people actually got bigger. They did better than people who are just normally aging. Then their hippocampal volume shrank very slightly, but less than people who are normal who are aging and much less than people who have cognitive decline. Mm -hmm.